Y'all, Steven here, Bama Saltwater. What is going on, everybody? So we just got to our first floating object. It's actually a balloon, which I'm gonna fish at first, and if there's nothing under it, or even if there's something under it and I catch it, I'm still gonna pick this balloon up. But I'm hoping I can find a triple tail. We're gonna get this balloon out of our water. There we go, a little heart balloon or something. And we're gonna move on and keep on running and gunning. That one single cloud full of rain it's really, really cool looking at from miles away. Y'all just made it to the first spot. So I'm gonna be throwing a Carolina rig. This is a four ounce egg sinker coming down to a black barrel swivel, 100 pound. And then I have about four foot of 50 pound fluorocarbon leader to an eight alt Gamagatsu circle hook. Now I am throwing this on a Siegler small game. It's a left-handed reel with 40 pound braid on a six and a half foot conventional heavy offshore rod. Let's grab a live pinfish out of the live well and drop one down. So here we go. Let's grab a big one. Where are you at? Alrighty, there's a pretty one. His tail's a little messed up. So, so there's my live pinfish. And I'm gonna take that circle hook and just go through the bottom of the lip and come out the top. Pretty sporty out here today, so hopefully you can see it. But that's it right there, real easy. Gonna let that pinfish sit down there. We're in a hundred foot of water. So something took my first pin fish. I missed the hook set, I guess. Which circle hooks, you're not really setting the hook. And there's old bottlenose dolphin. Oh, don't eat my bait, dude. But like I was saying, circle hooks, you just put pressure on it and start reeling. And majority of the time, you'll hook that fish in the corner of its mouth. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah. First fish on the pin fish. Mm. And it's a good one too. Oh yeah. Ah, come on. Nice fish. Mm. Ah, come on now. <laughs> this is what I wanted y'all. And we can keep red snapper today too. So if we can get them up, we can actually keep it. Oh, come on now. Get on up here, buddy. Mm using the torque of this reel to bring it up. What do you think it's gonna be, y'all? Come on. Oh, flipper's after it. Wow, it's a giant mangrove snapper. Good gracious, this is my biggest mangrove snapper ever. Biggest mangrove snapper yet. This thing is a stud. <laughs> that is so cool. I was hoping it'd be a red snapper, but these things I absolutely love and they're delicious eating too. Look at that mangrove snapper. That is awesome. Big old teeth on them. You can keep them year round. They only have to be 12 inches. This one's way legal. So he's going to go on ice. <laughs> Heck yeah. So I've got another live bait. I just set out a pinfish trap at my house in the bay and that's what I got. This one's actually a pig fish this time. Super, super bait right there. All right, let's get that pig fish down. See what else we can catch. This is epic right here. That was a beast of a mangrove. Ended up being 24 inches long. Probably a six, seven pound fish, if not more. I've been losing some giant fish today. So maybe I can actually get this one up. <laughs> oh, come on, buddy. This one doesn't feel giant, but it feels pretty good. The juvenile red, so it's gonna have to go back. But that's the target species, just not quite a keeper. There you go, man. He gone. Y'all, my planter just got hit. I'll stop the boat. Let's see what it is. This was a black and purple islander with the ballyhoo on a size two planer. We'll see what hit it. What are you? So there's a bunch of grass. Okay, here's the planer. And let's see what this is. Oh, shiny, shiny, shiny. What are you? Is it gonna be a little toony? Get out from under the boat. Ooh. Looks like it might be a little toony. 
Or is that, no, that's a king. Nice king too. Oh yeah, nice king. <laughs> that's so cool. Really nice king mac, y'all. See if we can get them up. Heck yeah. Here he is. Mm, I got a belly gaff, but I got him. Yes. Heck yeah, dude. That's what I'm talking about. Y'all check out my king mackerel. That's a nice one. Probably about 15 pounds or so. That's a really awesome king mackerel. Look at them teeth on these things. These are one of my favorite fish to catch just because it's what I grew up doing on the pier was catching king mackerel. They're not quite as good as a wahoo, but they're still good for smoked fish dip, fried king loins, and the like. But see, he's bleeding out after the gaff. I had a ballyhoo rigged up. I'm actually trolling three rods because I'm moving spots of snapper fish. Oh, that hook wasn't coming out easy. But have a little eight alt hook with a ballyhoo pin rig. And this is rigged up with 100 pound mono. And my lure is a purple and black Islander lure perfect combo for pulling behind a size two planer and it landed me this awesome king mackerel y'all there we go let's throw them in the cooler that's awesome y'all so i showed this in one of my last videos and i'll show you it to you again but this is my ballyhoo it's really easy to use you want them to thaw out naturally what i normally do is lay them on my ice in my cooler overnight or you can throw them in your live well and just let them sit in that salt water now, first thing I like to do is squeeze out all them guts. Well, I say guts, but it's crap. It's what it is. Squeeze out their crap shoot there. <laughs> all right, once that's done, I like to go break the back. So you squeeze kind of gently and you'll see the spine pop up. And that's gonna allow it to swim naturally behind your lure. So once that back's broken, I pop the bill off a little bit past the top of their mouth. And then I take the bill and run it through the eyes and try to pull these eyeballs out. This part's optional, but the eyes sometimes can come out like that. And if they do while you're pulling the lure, it'll cause it to spin. And spinning ballyhoo may catch some fish if they're hungry, but it just doesn't look natural. You want it to swim. See, now it's gonna be able to swim like that behind the lure. Let's rig it up. I crimp these pin rigs on my own, but you can also buy them. But this is an Adolt Big Game J hook. I use some chafing gear. See, that's metal chafing gear. And I've landed Wahoo, landed Kings, Mahi. So I like using mono. Just make sure that you have some sort of chafing gear there. You may get cut off, but that's just part of fishing. And it has this pin in it when you crimp it you can look all that stuff up online but i go where the v of this ballyhoo is where their gills make a v it's kind of sporty today so it's gonna be hard to keep focus on the camera but run it through make sure it's straight have the hook point come out the belly sit it just like that you want it to be straight if it's not straight it's not going to swim straight now you take this pin, last time I poked the heck out of my finger. See if I can avoid doing that this time. But see, you take that pin on that pin rig, run it through. Now you got a piece of wire sticking out of its head. This is just quick way. You can also rig it with some rigging wire, but these pin rigs are easy. Then you take this spring, it's a ballyhoo sent spring and twist it onto or screw it onto that pin see how i'm doing that i like to make sure it's all the way down don't force anything these bally are tough but you don't want them to tear see now we have a rigged up bally i like to kind of press that pin down out of the way and then you take your lure whether it's a chugger islander sea witch whatever you want, but I'm using a purple and black Islander. And it's about 50 feet behind my size two planer, which allows it to get down about 20 feet below the boat. 
So we're gonna get this out again. I'm pulling two other ballyhoo, but this is what I caught that king on just now. But I'm just trolling between six and eight knots, just in between my sapper spots. And uh, I actually like doing this better. I can catch, I can bottom fish all year, but I actually enjoy doing this type of fishing here. Looks like there might be some evening storms about to pop up. Y'all, since I didn't catch anything else trolling, I came over to this snapper reef and see if I can take the ballyhoo that I was using trolling and drop them down and try to catch me some snapper. Let's go ahead and get this cut ballyhoo down there. That was fun catching the king. I love catching them things. And you're allowed three a person here in Alabama. But I didn't get any other bites other than that fish. So start bottom fishing again. And there's a fish. Mm. Nice one too. There we go. <laughs> They love some fresh bait, tell you that. Let's get them up. Come on now. He's fighting back pretty good. Oh yeah, there's a nice red. All right. Not a bad one. This is about average size for your American red snapper down here. I've caught some real large ones, but these are actually my favorite ones to eat because they're so versatile. You can do them whole in the oven, on the grill. You could steam it. They're so delicious, but you definitely want to watch out for their gill plates. He got me pretty good. Catch king mackerel, catch wahoo, don't get cut up, but you catch these things, you'll be poked like crazy. Caught a nice mangrove snapper. Not quite as big as the one I caught earlier today, but that is a great, great specimen of one. Like I said, they only have to be 12 inches. You're allowed 10 of them a person here in Alabama. Yo, everyone, it's Steven here with Bam Saltwater. I am along the beach. This is actually Orange Beach, Alabama. Very pretty area. It's a nice afternoon and we're gonna do some trolling, try to fill up our cooler or just try to get some drags pulling. But y'all, first I wanna say, have hats on the website, Bama Saltwater Mert. And also this video is sponsored by J&H Tackle. They carry all the rods, reels, line, hooks, lures that I use on the channel. You can go get them at jnhtackle.com, linked down below. Just came across a bunch of Bonita and Spanish mackerel busting the surface. So these things are popping all over the place. So I'm gonna take that smaller X wrap and just start casting. One of them tried to come up and hit it. So I just switched to a one ounce Shimano current sniper jig. This is a casting jig. Get it real far out there and just wind it back to me. That's all I'm gonna do. See if we can actually hook one so I can show you. Yeah. Oh, see that? That was a nice little blow up. Oh, they're all right here. Come on. There's some ladyfish mixed in too. Oh, one just hit it. Come on. <laughs> all right, I got it. <laughs> oh, that's incredibly fun. Uh, come here, you. Are you a bobo or ladyfish? Pretty sure this one's a lady. Mm. No, that's a little toony. All right. <laughs> this is fun. They fight incredibly hard. Fast runs. <clears throat> Super fun with light tackle. <clears throat> Get them up. Come on. Are you worn down yet? <clears throat> Not yet. He ain't worn down yet. All right. Come on. They're tape. They are insane. There we go. Perfect. Hook came out and everything. Usually I don't need a boat flip stuff, but I did. Y'all, that is a Bonita or Little Toonie. They're different than the Albacore and Benito on the Atlantic coast. These are kind of on the bottom tier of eating. They are edible, they're not terrible, but he's gonna go in our cooler and get bled out and they're still busting everywhere. So let's hurry up, put them up and try to get another one. I see them right here, all these birds. If you find any birds working the surface, you usually wanna stop. Now you don't wanna pull it right in them, you know, pull it to the outside edges, up current or up wind if you can, so you can drift down into the school of fish without spooking them. Here's some more bobos. Let's get the jig out there again. There we go, right in between them. Ah. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> Come on. That's why those things are fun. Cause they will pull some drag. It's a pretty light wire hook. So I don't want to put too much pressure on them. But that is another Bobo. Oh, he's swimming towards the boat. These things are incredibly fun. You can get out here. You don't have to go far. You see the public beaches right there. I'm just out here finding birds. They're all over the place. Like tons of schools of bonita over there too. And now we're hooked up on inshore tackle, inshore lures, and we got another bobo. Come here. Here we go. They're in the mackerel and tuna family. They're in the scombrete family, scombrete. So they got some power to them. Here you are. It's another pretty one. All right, get your butt in the boat. <laughs> so here's another Bonita. That is so cool. He's gonna be bled out, dispatched, and thrown on ice as well. Y'all, we're back home. What a beautiful day out on the Gulf. And a few nice trips combined together. The wind picked up a lot. It got pretty sporty out there. It's hot in South Alabama in August. I mean, what's there not to like <laughs> when you walk outside and feel like you just took a hot shower, didn't dry off and put your clothes on, you got to love it. But we're going to go ahead and close out this video. This was just simple fishing. I gave that meat away to some neighbors as well and friends. I love being able to go out and fish and then keep at least one for myself and then be able to share with everybody that might not be able to get out there. So y'all go check out the sponsor of the channel like Mossy Oak, Dakota Lithium, J&H. They're all linked down below. Y'all go hit that subscribe button if you aren't already. If you already are, you know I appreciate you as always. We'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. So we'll see you later. That's cool.